Why, hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Voice of the Rings. I am your host and guide, Zaldar Shield, here on Voice of the Rings, as always, and today we are going to do a breakdown of the final second trailer for the second season of the Rings of Power Amazon series. All right, so I'm just going to say right off the bat, I feel like I don't shouldn't have to say this, but I'm going to say it because I want everyone to realize it. I want to review this because, you know, I understand some people really don't like it, some people really like it. I get that. I'm someone who really cares about Tolkien's canon. So there's a lot of things where it's like, I, I was disappointed with season one, but there's some stuff I liked. And I have to point out to everyone, just so you all know, as a content creator, I feel like I should still cover it because I want to be able to pick apart things, right? I totally, totally justifiable for anyone else who just doesn't want to watch it. You know, you're like, you know, I don't want to even watch it. I don't want to support it. That's fine, right? And I really think it's just fine too for people to be able to watch it, okay? And to be able to pick it apart and say what they like or dislike. That's what I'm gonna do here. And you know me, I'm a glass half full kind of guy. I really do enjoy looking at stuff in a positive manner, but I will be very, very direct on things I disagree with that will be um, important. And I'm gonna be covering that here on the channel. And I think that kind of debate is fun. I think what happens a lot of times, and I've said this in the past, and we'll get straight into it here, but I had this little intro we have a lot of like there's like these two boats one boat is like you know don't support it don't watch it it's horrible that's that's fine people can have that opinion right and the other one is it's awesome if you dislike anything in it you're horrible if you dislike it you know it's the best thing ever and that's fine to have that opinion too but the problem is the problem comes in when people try to force those opinions on others right or try to like shame someone oh how, why would you watch it or or why would you dislike it right both ways right goes both ways but the thing is, everyone's opinions are valid. We're all of our opinions are valid. I think that's totally, totally thing. Um, and it really just comes down to the solid point that I'm trying to make is, um, I think that we should still let other people enjoy it if they enjoy it and other people pick on it if they want to pick on it, right? That's how it should be. That should be good discussion, good freedom of speech, right? Um, I'm somewhere in the boat of, I've enjoyed parts of it, disliked other parts tremendously. Um, season one was fine. I'm more excited about season two. I think we're going to have some very, very cool things in season two. Again, I'm going to break down this trailer right now. We're going to talk about it in detail, but again, this whole video is point. I will also link the trailer in the description if you want to see it yourself. Um, whole point of this video is that you want to hear my opinion, right? That's, yeah, I'm voicing the Rings opinion on it. And again, I think that there's a lot of times that what happens is you almost get like you get the raginess right and you know me I'm not a raging youtuber I don't have any problem with people who are that's totally fine and I you know sometimes I agree with some raging youtubers what whatever their opinions are sometimes I disagree that's normal right we that's normal that should be good conversation and talk um so anyway the point is I'm gonna have fun I'm gonna review this series. We'll most likely have a watch party for the Rings of Power. Yes, for those who are curious. Um, if you guys don't care about it, my regular viewers, you know my channel. I do tons of Lotro, Reunited Color Replicas, lore videos, all other Return to Moria, tons of other games, and tons of other subjects, Lord of the Rings. So if you don't wanna see the Rings of Power stuff, just don't watch it. I have lots of other content too as well. But if you are here watching, I appreciate it. Maybe do a like and you know, like and a comment. What are your thoughts on the new trailer? I'd love to hear uh, everyone's views and opinions. And again, if you leave a comment that's just like, well, I hate it. Okay, but I'd like it, you know, break it down a little. What do you dislike about it, right? You know, or vice versa, you know, I love it. And say, what are the things you love about it, right? Um, that's what I would like to know. It's fun to hear other people's opinions. A lot of my close family and close friends, I have some people who really didn't like the season one, and I have some people who really loved season one in my close family and friends. I'm talking about, you know, that close group we all have of like 20 people, right? Um, so again, I know from my viewers, I have many different ranging opinions, and I just want you to know you're all welcome, no matter what, wherever you land on the spectrum, right, of disliking it or loving it, or somewhere in between. I'm somewhere in between. Um, I, I tend to try to be a YouTuber that comes at it with a perspective of, um, um, tempering. Let's put it that way. That's the word tempering, uh, my frustration or my likes, right? I want to try to give you a fair analysis if that is, uh, makes sense. All right. Anyway, with that, my friends, my little intro there, let's go ahead and review the trailer. All right. So I'm going to bring it up here and, uh, I'm going to keep it small because, and copyright, things but um i will go ahead and show you some stuff here as we go through it all right so 
it's the Rings of Power, the second one. Again, I'll leave it here. And we got some cool things in here. I don't know if I'm allowed to do the music and sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to play through it a little bit. Um, in fact, you know what? I'm going to flip it so you can see it big. So here on the screen. So one second. All, All right, right, there you go. go. So now, now you can, you can see, see it big. big. So, I'm so I'm gonna go ahead and keep it muted, muted my friends. But, but we'll, we'll go ahead and look at here. And I'm gonna do some pause, pause frames and stuff. And stuff. So, so the first thing, thing we get is the shot of more. You know what? We're just, we're just gonna, gonna play it through once. once. We're, gonna we're gonna play it through once. I'm gonna watch it with you. And I'm sure they don't care about that. We're we're advertising it for them technically. So if it's a problem, I'll mute it later. All right, here we go. Let's watch it one time through. So with that. Real, Real quick, quick review of it, they're watching it one time. Let's break it down here. Okay. okay. Um, I'm going to keep it muted, and, and I'm going to talk about some stuff. stuff. There's, There's a lot to unpack here. I don't want to make this video way too long, so we won't go crazy on it. Um, I could do more detailed breakdown things in the future, but I think what I'll keep that to doing... I'm going to do individual reviews of each episode as we go. So I will do my best with the knowledge of the lore I have from the actual Tolkien lore compared to what they're working on. So the first thing we have is war is coming to Middle Earth, right? We get a really cool shot of, you know, the king again. I, I think he looks really cool. Again, remember, there's a big lower problem with the fact that there are two Durans at once. That's a huge issue. But in, in itself, itself it's, it's not, not the end of the world. I, I actually like the father-son relationship, but realistically, only one of them should have Doran. All right, so because Doran, technically, in the dwarven uh, lore, is from Tolkien, is he kind of like the dwarves believe he reincarnates. So there's never been a Doran. Whether, Whether he is or isn't reincarnated every time, it's not a different dwarf, and they just name him Doran. That's not the important part. The important part is you don't get. Uh, double durance durance at the same time. time. Uh, uh, but, but anyway, that's, that's really not like the, the big problem here, okay? okay. Uh, the, the statue looks really cool in the back. back. Again, I don't know about... I've always, I've always wondered with his helmet. helmet. I mean, it's, it's cool, cool looking, but it looks a little, a little too orcish, orcish his, dwarven his dwarven helmet. helmet. I feel like it should be fancier with some gems and stuff. That's just my own opinion, but yeah. Then we get some cool shots of the orcs coming up to the probably... I mean... Aragian. Now, now it's, it's funny, funny because like some people call it a region, some people call it a region, some people call it some other things. I heard Elrond say the actor here say Aragian, but I've heard other people say region. So we're not going to worry about that with the terminology with this uh, the the area, um, but and where you know the city is, but. Um, Anyway, anyway, as, as we, we go through, through you, can you can see they're coming here and attacking. The orcs, orcs look really good, good okay? The, the mountains, mountains look really good. good. The, the visuals look great. I, if you remember my reviews on season one, one I was not worried about the visuals whatsoever of um, things. I, I thought the visuals looked amazing. Like the cities and the locations look perfect. I had no problem with that. They look great. Um, I would have liked to see more of Moria, but they still looked really good. Um, the, 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 my issues are in other places, places right, that, that are probably, probably more important. important. Um, so, so let's, let's go through, you can go through, through here again. again. And again, I hope that you guys appreciate the fact that I take this reviewing as kind of like a more serious and middle ground, where I'm not like praising every single thing, but at the same time, I'm not just like raging at every single thing. Because like, the bottom line is we have to remember, this does not affect the original Tolkien canon. Okay, it does not affect our normal Tolkien canon. And if you want other things that adapt the lore really good in video game form, go play Lord of the Rings Online and Return to Moria and come watch my videos of that. Because those games, they add a bunch of stuff in that isn't Tolkien canon. But they're like legends, like the terminology like you'd use in Star Wars, right? Canon, legends, and then fan fiction, right? It's like really, really good. There's some stuff in here that you might be able to consider legends with rings of power, but... I tend, I tend to lean towards a lot of its fan fiction because, because so many, many things were changed, changed but, but it still has the, the air of Lord, Lord of the Rings names, names right, on locations. But um, um, let's, let's just keep going. going. But again, yeah, this whole scene right here looks really, really, really cool. cool. Um, there's a broken bridge. bridge. I, remember I remember there being a big river, so how did the orcs get across? My friend's channel, Lord of the Rings, I saw what he said. He thought maybe the orcs dammed the river. I think that's a really good guess, considering we already had the whole water thing to make Mount Dugum off. By the way, that, that whole, whole thing, thing in the season one, one just to jump, jump back, back real fast. fast. The, the sword, sword putting, putting in, that was kind of silly, right? right? It's a good giant key, but, but it, like, it still looked cool, like sword in the stone thing. thing. But, but that, that, but the idea that the orcs, orcs were digging a hole so that water could dump in Mount Doom to make Mount Doom go off, that was really cool. Because there's actually like premise for that with real geology, right? And real volcanic things. A lot of times volcanoes go off when the magma underground hits a water source. And it, it, it causes a massive amount of pressure and steam, and it, it goes off, and then it starts a chain reaction. So that was really, really cool with Mount Doom, with how the, how it went off. 
even, even though, though again, again that's not, not lore accurate, accurate at all from Tolkien, from Tolkien but it was, it was a cool way, way to do it. it. Was, was the sword important and all that stuff? Eh, I would have just liked to see the orcs pulled on the wall and just flood it, right? But that's okay. So, so next shot, shot the, the catapults lined up look really, really cool. Or technically, technically these would be trebuchets, trebuchets right? Because um, they, they kind of have a counterbalance weight. weight. Uh, uh, there, there is a difference between a catapult and a trebuchet. Catapults, catapults are usually wound up with, with some, some kind of tension and then released and it flings. Where a trebuchet is usually don't have something that winds up here. It just brings it down. And they have a big counterbalance weight that launches the material. Right. right. So, so for, for example, example, the, the Battle of Pelennor Fields in the Lord of the Rings Peter Jackson films, we know, we know that the orcs were using catapults, remember, because they had, like, tie them down and they'd fire, fire. And the Gondorians were using trebuchets off the, the, off the, off the castle walls, walls with the big counterbalances. counterbalances. So, so interesting. So, so it's kind of cool, cool to see the orcs, orcs would they have this technology to make this kind of stuff? They obviously have to have some smart people leading them, which is, I think, where that newer character comes in who's, like, half-elf, half-orc corrupted over time, and, and apparently doesn't, doesn't really like Sauron, Sauron which is kind of an interesting, interesting plot twist, and I see nothing wrong with it, and it seems kind of fun. fun. Um, um, but, but yeah, let's keep, keep going. going. So, so then we got, got um, we got, got a, a oh, this, this is an actual, actual see, the trebuchet's launching, how it has the counterbalance in the back. In the back. So, so we get, get a shot of them attacking at night, which, I mean, it looks pretty cool. Now, something that, there's a big thing about realism here, I'm gonna put a little background music on, there's a big thing about realism here with, um, you know, you know, did catapults and trebuchets really launch stuff with a lot of fire on them? Well, well it's a fantasy series. series. That, that wasn't, wasn't really the case as much with arrows. arrows. That, that rarely happened with arrows, arrows. okay? Um, but, but you did get some fiery things, things being shot, shot occasionally, but, but a lot of times when they're shot, they get put out. out. So you, it's, it's like, like that's, that's kind of a fantasy TV show like thing to do. Uh, with fire, because um, um, it just looks cool, cool at nighttime, nighttime, right? Because, because it's even more terrifying is the fact that you couldn't see them at nighttime, right? right? Normally, Normally, if it was really, you know, if someone was shooting one at nighttime, nighttime. But, but anyway, not, not that important. important. But anyway, they're shooting a couple shots. We get a few uh, things here. Also, um, do I have, I do have subtitles on, good. so we'll hear their voice things. We get a shot of Elrond in full body armor, like, like, like re ready to fight or something. Okay, he looks cool. By the way, I, I did not have a problem with Elrond in season one. I actually thought he was one of my, one of my favorites. He did a really good job. Um, the actor, you could tell, truly, really, really is trying to embody Elrond from the books. So he's doing his very best. And it's, 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 it comes out, you can tell. Um, though, uh... You know, you know, we'll we'll, we'll see, see how it turns out with the battle and how they time things. And apparently, the series is going to have a lot of battling over the whole thing. So I guess we'll find out. Then we get a shot where Galadriel says, "You know, this is Sauron's work, right?" And and obviously, this is where they're surrounded by uh, some Barrowites, I guess, or something. And um, now, technically, the Witch King would have not made the Barrow Downs yet. All right, at this time of the story. That's, that's closer, closer to the third, third age, age and the beginning of the third age. So, so I mean, I mean these, these things have to be some kind of evil that Sauron made. Maybe in maybe they're over in Rune, right, or Harad or something. Maybe they've really jumped around. I really hope, and this something that I didn't like in season one that I really want to see in season two is showing the distances between locations. Because like you just the only time you know distances are long is when you see the Song of the Hobbits when they're traveling on their little cart. Which, by the way. I wasn't a fan of having hobbits, and, and that part with the singing, and the, that, that, that actually, I enjoyed that. I thought that was really cute, and the song was good, and I liked how, you know, they were traveling together. <laughs> the hobbits left them behind. That's horrible. But, side note. Um, but, yeah, you could see how far they were traveling. You, you never, never see, see that in season one with other things. It's, it's like, boom, we're in Numenor. Boom, we're in Aragian. Boom, we're in Linden. Boom, we're in Mordor. Do you guys know how far apart these locations are? It's like, it's like going, going from, from like, you know, Ireland down to like, you know, I don't know, like, like close to India, India right? right? Or some part of the Middle East. Like, like it's a long distance, right? Or, or traveling, traveling from Alaska to somewhere on the East Coast of the United States, States right? right? Like, like that's, that's a really far distance. distance. Um, so, so you're, you're driving at 80 miles an hour in a car, it would take you like, you know, 50 hours to travel it, right? And that's a car. It's going to be days and days and days. And days. So, so I would like to see it a little more. But let's keep, can keep going here. Then we get a couple shots of when he's Halbrand. All right. So we get a shot of him as Halbrand still. Now, 
I really wished Halbrand, I liked his character in season one, I really wished he was the Witch King, because it would have made us feel so bad for him, right, if he had been turned into the, so we see this guy trying to help and trying to, like, you know, help his people in Mordor, and then later he's the one that becomes the Witch King, the one of the, 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 the Nine Rings um, from Sauron, that would have been cool, that was my hope, but, you know, he turns into Sauron, so. I, I don't really like the whole thing, I'll just get it right off the bat, um, the whole, like, you know, you know he's trying to like woo Galadriel. Galadriel. That's, that's really weird, weird to me. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I mean, mean maybe some, some people enjoyed that. that. If you did, that's, that's great. great. But lore perspective, no, no, no man, no, not in that way. way. Not, not in a like, like a, you can be my queen. No, no. 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 It, was it was more like, like he like, like look, look at this power I can give you. That would have been a little bit. It definitely leans towards he's trying to get her to like be his queen and rule with him, right? Which just seems kind of funny to me. But I don't know. We'll just move on from that. Um, um, so, so then we get a shot, shot of, for a second, they sh give a shot of him in um, his Anatar form. form. Okay, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give Amazon some serious points for this. Until I mean, I don't know how he's gonna act or what he's gonna do, but that looks like Anatar, right? Like this looks like him. And in fact, if we bring up, uh, if you see in my Rise to War videos, I talk about this a lot. The commander for Anatar or Sauron looks a lot like this actor, and they made that before Amazon did. Um, so, so it, it looks really good. good. I'm, I'm gonna say it looks really good. good. I'm glad, glad we're gonna see Anatar. Anatar. I, still I still think Anatar should have been season one, but or at least Halbrand shouldn't have. Even, even though I liked Halbrand's character, character. You, you see, see where it's like, like a conflict, conflict of, in my mind. Okay, okay moving on. on. Um, so, so then we get a fiery shot, shot right of him coming out of a forge or something. Um, and again, you guys leave your comments on all these parts. What do you guys think? But um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know what is happening here. What, is he, like, coming out as Anatar? And, like, look, I'm glorious now, even though I was Halbrand. I, I don't know. That's another thing that confuses me from season one. How in the heck could the elves not understand or see that it's Halbrand now in elven form? Maybe they will know it's Halbrand now turned into an elven form. But why would they trust Halbrand? Will they now know he's Sauron? Did Galadriel not tell everyone that he's Sauron? That, that would be insane, insane right? right? She, she better tell them right at the beginning of season two, right? Did she, I think she, or did she tell Elrond at the end of season, season one? I, I, I'm forgetting off the top of my head. Gotta, gotta go rewatch it before season two starts. Um, um, but um, um, I only watched it twice because I was reviewing it. But um, yeah, I, hmm, interesting. I don't know. But um, he looks cool with his little band and his awesome elven ear. So good job. And then they get a shot of I think it's him opening his eyes. I, I'm, I'm not, not sure why. why. I know uh, Matt, Matt over Nerd of the Rings said something about him being killed by the other orc leader, and then maybe he revived. I don't really remember that, but I guess we'll find out. That's just a little side note. But um, then we get him walking obviously away from this is the dwarven realm, and you can see back here we have that the same thing we saw at the beginning, where it's the um, you know his throne with the two pigs that he for the the dwarven king right in Khaz Doom, Durin. Um, so, so maybe he gave one of the rings of power to the dwarves. Another, Another thing that is hard for, so let's just keep going through here. Let me get this shot, which, um, looks better if you, if you don't just pause it. Um, because clearly he does something. Like, it seems really stupid the guy just stops. So I'm curious here if, if Sauron somehow took control of his mind. Okay? And like, you really just did that? Like, Sauron and it just kills him. Um, I, don't I don't know. We'll find out. out. But, but if he really, if this elf tried to stab, stab and that was Sauron's dodge, like, like that, that was his dodge, dodge. he's so surprised, surprised he could dodge, dodge that, 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 that would, would be really dumb. dumb. Okay, okay. So, so I'm hoping that's not what it is. Okay, okay. This, is, this is just me. I'm hoping this is, he's like, oh, no, he's so, like, he's so terrified, and then he, like, takes over his mind and cuts him, right? Like, that's what I'm hoping for. Also, you can see Killer Brimbor back here being really wounded. Killer Brimbor seems, in my mind, even though the actor I do like, um, I, know I know they made him look older, which is weird. Most elves, elves don't look old. The only elf that looks old is like, um, uh, oh, well, I'll remember his name in a second. Kirdan. Yes, Kirdan the Shipwright, right? Uh, which is going to be in season two, which that will be really exciting. He looks good. We'll talk about him. I think they show him once in this. If they don't, uh, still, he looks really, really cool. Um, and he's got a little white beard, and, like, it's perfect. Kirdan looks great. Um, um, Kelly Brimbor, again, I like the actor, but he, he seems, seems a little too, too 
easily deceived for me. Like, like he, he was, they were definitely deceived, deceived right? The, the elves, but not like that much, right? right? Like, like it, it wasn't, wasn't like, like you know. We'll, we'll, we'll see, see how, how they, they do it in season two. two. Then, then we, we get a shot of, I'm assuming this is Harad or Rune, which I'll tell you, I'm really excited. I want to see more of that. Lord of the Rings Online, the MMO, has been covering that a lot. It's been super fun. I've really enjoyed it. Um, so it'll be fun to see, like, live action, or at least animated, to make it look real. Um, that'll look really cool. Then we get a shot of, you know... Gilgalad, who, by the way, looks great and looks a lot like the actor who played Gilgalad in the beginning of the Fellowship movie, if you remember, which is cool. You know, our armies cannot defeat him. Okay, this is an interesting thought because, you know, I think maybe what he's implying here is that we'll be overwhelmed by how many orcs he has. Sauron, right? Well, it's going to be hard to save, you know, Aragian. I, I, I'm assuming that's what's going on um, when, El, when Elrond is asking Noah to help him. And, of course, we know in the real lore, Elrond does go and try to help um, and then gets pushed back to the north, and that's when he finds Rivendell later, right? And also the dwarves help out, too. I think they help come out and help Elrond escape, which is what I think looks like they're following all of that combat lore from the canon. That's a good thing. And then we get a really cool shot of a battle on the wall, which I'm going to have to say, this wall battle looks really, really nice. Um, can I get it with a clean, clean image here? Uh, that's pretty good. Um, it looks really, really cool. So these are the walls, obviously the walls of Aragian when they're really engaging. And then we see a kind of Sauron kind of just, you know, walking away from explosions, which, I mean... At, At this point, point he, he looks really good. good. This, this, this is, in my mind, how Anatar should have been. This is how season one he should have been. Yeah. yeah. So, that's, that's good. good. And, and then, then once the Deceiver, Deceiver obtains a being's trust, also, I'm assuming he's putting on one of the rings of power, because we know that, you know, he had one of them, the king, right? Um, Gilgalad. And also, wow, that is a whole lot of rings. I, again, I, I know I keep mentioning it, but I was watching Bat's review. Of, and he was like, that's a lot of rings. I'm like, I, yeah, that's a lot of rings, guys. Wow. This guy's really into his rings. Good thing he had an extra finger with no ring, so he could put on the one ring. And not the one ring, but one of the elven rings, right? Uh, once the Deceiver obtains a being's trust, this is weird to me a little bit. All right. right, and, and also, also he gains the ability to sculpt, sculpt very thoughts. thoughts. So, so one, one thing I like to see is supposedly the tree is now being healed because they're using the elven rings. rings. Now, now here's, here's a funny thing. thing. I th clearly, clearly to me, Sauron helped, helped make the elven rings, which is not right, right? 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 Um, um, and, and a lot of people I was reading articles saying, oh, he didn't help. Celebrimbor made those rings by himself before, you know, with Galadriel. I'm going, no. I mean, we, we know, know how Red mentioned how to put the alloys together, together to make the rings, rings which, again, what originally happened is all the rings were created, then the elves found out, so they made three of their own rings to kind of combat it, right? right? Three, the three elven rings, and they're made at the very end. So the fact that they went and made the three rings first is a huge lore issue, which just, just, just does this to the story. So we'll see how how they, they run, run with that. that. that that's that's going to be something, something that's going to be either a big criticism for me, for me or like, like, oh, okay, they did that, that you know, that wasn't too bad. bad. You know, uh, we'll see. see. Um, but, but then he says, you know, about Sauron, he gains the ability to sculpt their very thoughts. thoughts. If they get in their mind, yeah, sort of. Sauron is the deceiver. I don't know, like, he definitely has mental power to an extent. I'm not quite sure what a level of it, right? As much. Um... And then, and then he, he gains, gains the ability to sculpt, sculpt the very thoughts. thoughts. That's he's the one saying it. it. And, and then, then we, we get, get a shot of Gladriel and Celebrimbor. Especially, looks like that garden place again. again. Um, I assume in Linden, right? right? Wasn't that Linden that had this spot? Or, uh, I think it was Linden. And then, and then you, you see, see this crazy, like, like he gets attacked by a tree. Now, now is this happening? Is this a? Is this like an image in their mind, in his mind or Gladriel's mind? And he's got even like sticks sticking out of his chest. I don't even know what's going on here, really. I'm assuming this is probably. It would, it would be, be weird, weird if this was the end. end. When he, so, I have a feeling this is probably in their minds or something. But I don't know. It's it, it seems a little weird, a little to me personally. And then you know, you know, Gladriel. I mean, look at point. Gosh, her eyes being bigger. Um, she's she's upset about it. So I'm thinking maybe this is a dream because this is kind of like how you'd act in a dream, right? Like you just like it's so intense. 
um, um, in that way. way. Then, then we, we get, get some, some cool shots, shots of orcs. orcs. The, the practical-looking practical orcs look, look awesome. awesome. They, they look, look they look awesome. Okay, okay. Big, big fan of the orcs. orcs. Um, then, then we, we get, get a shot of these the the Numenorean guard like rounding up these people in white gowns or something. Um. And, and like, like that's, that's cool. cool. <laughs> I don't know why they're doing it. I mean, I, mean, I don't think rounding up anyone is a good idea. idea. It's terrible. So, so I shouldn't say it's cool. cool. But um, um like I, I'm, I'm assuming this is maybe like the faithful, faithful right? So, so like, like Numenor's, Numenor's turn, turn to turn kind of evil, and Alpharazon's taken over, and these are the elderly like like, like leadership that are the faith of the faithful, who later we know Isildur and Elendil leave with, and they take you know Isildur takes a seed of the white tree, and they leave, and then the island gets sunk. Now will the island get sunk in this season? I doubt it. I, I bet you that'll be this third season, but um they're probably trying to start building up to it, even though it seems a little early to be doing this. But, but um, um, it, it makes, makes sense. sense. So, so we'll see. And then, of course, that, that was that one girl who's a made-up character for who's a daughter of Elendil. I mean, gosh, gosh, it goes by so fast. fast. Oh, oh my gosh, gosh that's like. like... <laughs> I can't get it. That's, that's crazy. crazy. Let me try. Let me try the space bar. Ah, oh, got, got it. Okay, okay. <laughs> it goes really, really fast. fast. Um, um, she's, she's obviously, obviously seeing it happen, and it's like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. Which obviously, obviously it's horrible. horrible. Um, but, but I'm kind of curious to like, like um, what her role will be more, and will, will she turn and be with the eye like, like the bad ones, ones and then maybe a and the sealed are gonna have to like, you know, oh horrible, our sister turned to the dark side basically. I mean, that would be an interesting twist plot. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, then, then we got another shot of Sauron. Sauron. Then, then we get a shot of Elrond, Elrond um, with some guards. And, and then we see, see the rings of power. power. Um, you're, you're wise, wise to fear these things. things. Um, I, 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 one thing a little confusing with me is Galadriel, Galadriel knows, knows now that the rings are... are uh, in, in the, the previous, previous trailer that they put out, out sorry, she, she was like being talked to by her ring of power, power which none of them have voices. voices. The only one that does that is the one ring, and because it, it has part of Sauron's soul in it. Um, um, these aren't horcruxes, horcruxes okay? okay? I mean, I, mean, I, I guess, guess technically the one. one I mean, I, 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 well, actually, is, is that where J.K. Rowling got that idea? <laughs> Sorry, probably. probably. I've heard a theory about that, but she obviously liked Lord of the Rings. She said that, but um. Yeah, yeah, so, so like, like, but of, but of course, course, I don't, I, you know, Sauron killed a lot of people, but he didn't have to kill someone to make it. He just made it. Um, um, but, but yeah, yeah that, that seems a little weird to me, but you fear these, these things, things, okay, that's, that's yeah. yeah. Then, then we, we get, get a shot, shot of Disa and Doran. Doran's awesome. Uh, Disa's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I, just I just don't think her character has been very impactful. I liked her in like one or two spots in season one that she was nice, and then she started like, it's farther into season one, she started getting kind of like, the things she said, said were kind of like dark, and, and I was like, oh. At the beginning, she was like kind of supporting Durin, and, and then she started saying, oh yeah, your your dad, blah blah blah, you know this. And I was like, hmm. I don't really, I don't really like where it went. went. So, so maybe season two it'll be fine. It'll it'll go to a nicer spot um, with that. But here's another thing we need to talk about. Okay. So then we get uh, you know the shot that is so cool. By the way, the throne looks cool. Again, I would like a better crown, but he looks awesome. Side side, he looks really really cool. In, in Sauron's hands, hands they can work an evil beyond, beyond reckoning. All right, All right. So, so basically, basically they're, they're saying we can't let Sauron get his hands on the rings of power, right? right? That's, that's okay. okay. That's, that's canon. canon. That's, that's that's how it was. was. All right. And, and then we got, got a shot of Sauron. I don't, I don't know, know meditating. No, I don't know. Maybe he's summoning. Maybe he's the one summoning these Barrow Whites to attack from far away. Maybe that's what they're trying to show. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure what was going on there. Uh, uh, but, but the Barrow Whites, they look cool. Should, should they be here? here? I don't know. But boy, do they look freaking cool and, and very scary and exactly how they're described in lore. So, so I'm kind of glad we get to see them and then we get, get a, you know, them battling. Then we, then we get, get a beautiful, beautiful shot of Aragian, which, by the way, this is a 10 out of 10. This looks so good. That looks so good. Aragian must not fall. I think it's Elrond saying it. Um, then you get a shot of orcs pulling down the wall. Then you get a shot of some battle. And this is actually Glorfindel. I'm sorry. Not Glorfindel. Take, Take that back. Got all your hopes up for nothing. nothing. You're all like, no! It's Gilgalad. <laughs> Glorfindel could technically be around. He's alive, but um, he's not in this. 
Thank, Thank goodness. goodness. We, we have way, way too, too many, many new characters, characters being added to season two anyway. Um, um, you go glad, excuse my words, and he's, and he's got, got Kaliglos, his spear. So, so that'll be really cool to see, uh, you, know, you know, an elf fighting with a spear. Because, because we've seen elves fighting, fighting with, like, long swords and stuff. And stuff. But, but that'll, that'll be really, really, really cool. And I have also that armor looks pretty cool. Except he's not very blue. Usually he wears, like, blue with a golden, like, a star. So I don't know how lore I get the armor is to at least what the battle of the, you know, the, the last, last alliance, alliance was. This, this isn't the battle, battle of the last alliance. alliance. And, and also, also, I don't think Gilgalad went to this battle. So, so unless he's fighting somewhere in Linden, I don't know why he's at Aragian. So, I don't know, Aragian. Aragian. Uh, uh, it, would it would be a mortal blow, blow for all of Middle Earth. Earth. All, right, all right, then we got, got a shot of Gladriel is actually captured. captured. Mind you, I like this, like this, this get up look where she's can like one of her like like a beautiful robe and she's got her long hair. It's not all put up and like. She, she actually, actually looks, looks like, like the Gladriel, Gladriel you know, we get, get with the Cape Blanche, like, sorceress look, right? Where they're, they're like, it's like, too, too beautiful, beautiful, too great, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> you get, you get with Cape Blanche. Blanche. Um, so, so this, this actually, actually look is a lot better. Of course, they probably have her hair down because, oh, she's disheveled, she's in prison. It's like, no, that's how her hair should always be. But it doesn't matter too much. Then we get a big wave, which is near the mountains. So I'm assuming this is something to do with that river that was low. By Aragian, and uh, we'll see though, though how that how, how that is. Then, then we, we get, get a shot of I don't know what's, what's going on here. I, mean, yeah, I guess she's doing, doing her like resonating thing. thing. That, that to me is a little like, like I, I, get I get it with the dwarves. dwarves. Like, like I guess, I guess it could fit into an extent, extent but I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Um, it seemed like she was almost like the mountain was crying, like upset about something, and she looked more upset than usual. Then we get the shot of this boulder falling. Oh man, these dwarves are—they're just that's that's too bad. Ow! Yikes! All right. Well, anyway, we've seen this shot before, but the bridge is obviously falling in, and then we get a shot of what's his name again, saying sooner or later Sauron's eye bores say whole, right? And, and, and then, then we get a shot of happy about with the Palantirs is, is that they have, have the ability to see some things in Middle Earth, but they don't really have the ability to like look into the future from what I've read. If any of Tolkien's lore, they're more like communication devices and looking around the world. Um, so the fact that like in season one, it like gave her a vision and stuff, they're not. I think, I think there's, there's a, a there's a conflation here have happening in the, the fact, fact that people are like, oh, they're crystal balls, right? right? The, the way the writers are writing it, it. They're, they're not. not. They're, 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 they're stones, for one. They're not crystal, and they're not glass. They're, they're stone. stone. And that's a that's a big physical what the substance is. And they don't have the ability to, like, glance in. I think I think there's something I mentioned where they may be pulling this idea that the really powerful one, one person was able to use it to slightly, slightly glance or something, or something or maybe use it, but even then it was like, it was shaky in the, in the, in the real lore. lore. So, so it's really going overboard, I think, with that. So even though the animation looks really cool, cool. given that. Um, um, then we get a sky of uh, riding off in the sunset here in uh, somewhere on the west coast of America. I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> some western movie. No, just kidding. But uh, yeah, Rune... Uh, I'm assuming, I'm assuming rune, rune from, from that flag. flag. It, it looks like a rune flag, flag with the orange, orange but it has an eye of Sauron on the flag, so we'll see. Great, Great shot of some cool looking orcs. orcs. Then, then we get a shot of him, him maybe helping. Is this when he's helping again kill a Brimbor towards the rings, the other rings of power? Then we get a shot of some elves. By the way, this looks great. This looks fantastic. Look at all the elves being happy. We got someone painting a picnic. They're like sewing. This they're walking their dog. I love it. There's dogs in Middle Earth. And elves, and elves like dogs because we, we know dogs, dogs are awesome. awesome. Um, and uh, uh, you, you even got, got some like birds going, going on. on. There's a dog over here. here. And, and uh, this, this is really nice. I really like how this looks. looks. Um, then Keller Brimbor doesn't look so happy. I think, I think he here, here he's, he's almost worried that something bad's bad about, about to happen. And he's seeing like, like you know, he wants to protect his people kind of thing. I have a feeling that I feel like Keller Brimbor, don't get mad at me for saying this, but I feel like he's just a little too soft. Like, in, 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 in the, the Rings of Power. power. And, I and I hope in season two, two he's not too soft. soft. I, he, he needs to be... Uh, in, the, in the books, he was definitely a more calm leader. He wasn't, like, like warring, but he, he was not afraid to fight back. And, and, and Sauron, and Sauron yes, yes, they deceived all the elves, elves but, but when, when he realized, he was like, oh, I know what happened, right? right? Um, he, he said, said, you sought peace, I gave it to you. 
and, and then you get some more shots, shots of happy elf children, children. And, and then you know, you know this is him Sauron saying it, it. And, and he goes, goes this, this is hardly a gift. gift. I think he, I think, I think for some, some reason they're, they're going to play with the fact that Sauron's like getting into his mind, mind which sort of happens in the lore. Not, not really. Um, it's, it's like it's, it's it could be stretched in the lore, lore and say that what was happening. happening. So, so maybe it'll be okay. We'll see. We'll see with that. And then he sees like this image. What have you done to me? And he sees like maybe the future or something. And, and Sauron, like, Sauron, Sauron we, we do know, know though, he, he does, does put images in people's minds and, and tricks people that way. So, so that's, that's not, not entirely, it, it's plot, it's, it's completely plausible for Frank's part. But, but we'll see, all I know is with Color Brimbor, he didn't, like, get psychologically, like, a horror movie broken down by Sauron, right? It was more like he was tricked, and then he was like, oh, you tricked me. And then he fights him, and then things still don't go very good for Color Brimbor. Lore, spoiler, sorry. But, um... Yeah, yeah, and, and then, then he says, what have you done to me, you know? Yeah. And, but you see, he almost seems scared. He, the, the way he, he almost seems like he's scared of Sauron. And, and it's like, I think, I think that's more for the viewers. viewers. They, they want the people watching the TV show, show to be scared. Like, oh, crap, Sauron, right? Because we kind of know it's Sauron, right? So I think that's what they're trying to do for drama reasons. So we'll see how it comes out. But the way he's kind of like scared is kind of weird to me. His face looks pretty good, though. Sauron, like, no emotion. I like that. Um, who are, are you truly? truly? That's, That's a good shot. shot. I, like I like how he says, says that, that and looks like that. That, that was more like the Celebrimbor, like, who are you truly? Like, like, that's good. That, 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 that was good. Um, I'm, I'm keeping, keeping one, keep, uh, keeping the storm at bay. I don't know what that means. He is the storm. Maybe he's saying that, like, he's keeping his own orcs at bay for everybody. I don't know. I don't know. They get a cool shot of an exploding fireball. People are like, oh my gosh, it's a fireball. But yeah, it's kind of awesome. Um, and, and then, then you get a shot, shot of Celebri more on the ground, on the ground that you get a shot of an orc doing a hack, hack hacking someone, a bunch, bunch of people who've been killed. killed. I'm, I'm having a, okay, okay. So, so this spot is a little weird to me. me. Celebrimbor's like crying. Hey, I, mean, I mean, all I can think is if Sauron puts some image in his mind of all his people dying, so he starts crying, like threatening him. But I just don't feel like that's Because like, we know that Celebrimbor, like, you know, pick up a freaking hammer and slap Sauron in the face. Like, that's how Celebrimbor is in the books. Right? We know that Celebrimbor, Lord of the Rings Online does this really well, right? And also, of all games, Shadows of Mordor, right? Shadows of Mordor obviously goes way off floor, but has Celebrimbor fight Sauron? He, spoilers, loses. But, he fights it, right? He doesn't just start crying, right? Now, again, hopefully, maybe in the movie here, they're just doing this for the trailer, and he'll turn around and pick some and start fighting Sauron. Sauron. Who knows? Who knows, right? We'll have to see the movie to find out. I don't want to, like, do judgment until I've seen what they do with it. But uh, I just don't really like the whole, like, he's cr falling, crying. Uh, it's just not Celebrimbor, right? Um, in, the, in the lore of this character. Like, there, I mean, obviously everybody has to cry sometimes, no matter what you, who you are, like, and or how strong you are. But I, it's just not, it's just not in his character. He just doesn't do it very much. Um, um, so, so we'll, we'll see, see though. though. But, but I have a feeling that, that maybe he showed him a vision of all his people being killed, killed and he's trying, trying to like trick him. him. You, you know, the whole idea of like boring in his mind, something, something like that. That's, that's my guess. guess. That we got, got a shot of Sauron, got a shot of look at those nasty teeth. He needs to brush those teeth a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a dentist. And then we get a shot of the Numenor, or actually, these these are elves coming onto the shore. Wait, what? Why are there just some elves here and no boats and no. Oh, there's, oh, there's people, people up on the cliff. cliff. Maybe, Maybe this, this is Numenor. Numenor. This, this might supposed to be Numenor. Maybe, Maybe they're, they're having, having a ceremony. ceremony. I don't know. I don't know it's, it's cool. Uh, and it is my enemy as much as yours, someone, someone says. And I think that is the orc commander guy. guy. Um, then we get a shot of the elves walking, which is kind of cool. I'm assuming maybe this is in Linden. Maybe this is them coming to Numenor. I guess we'll find out. I'm assuming it's Elrond's little group of people. See, See, then, then we, we get, get a spot where apparently he captures Galadriel and basically tries to start convincing her to help me kill Sauron. This is a total twist that's completely Rings of Power Amazon. And by the way, I'd like to point out that like when I say the Rings of Power Amazon, I always say Amazon because it's their version of the Rings of Power. The Rings of Power term was made by Tolkien. It's a cool term, okay? And I feel like a lot of times when people make fun of the series, they're like, oh, the Rings of Power. It's like, no, Rings of Power is a freaking awesome name. Tolkien made that up. Amazon's just using that as a title, right, of the show. And uh, whether it's good or not good, or do you like it or dislike it, we have to remember that Tolkien was the one who made that name. It's awesome. 
Um, look at, look at that. that. And then he so sows some orcs out there. Out there. I, can I can help you destroy him. him. So I'm, I'm assuming, assuming that she probably, probably doesn't accept it. it. Then, then we get a really, really cool shot of the Belrog. Bell Let's just talk about this real fast. We're almost done. We're going to wrap this up pretty quick here. We're almost at the end. The, the Bell Belrog. I glad, I'm glad they made him look like Peter Jackson's, Jackson's right, right, to an extent. extent. Um, I, know I know some people are like, like I want a human-sized, human you know, Maiar-style Maiar Belrog, right? right? Or it's more like the like size of Gandalf or something, or, something, or just a little bigger. bigger. Um, I don't, I don't know. know. I think the Belrog. I think it's good that they kept with the similar what Peter Jackson did just for people who are really into the movies. Um, the wings aren't physical wings. They're smoke. That's following the lore, at least from what we can see here. That's cool, right? You know, that's cool. Um, again, yeah, looking, looking this, this whole part, part looks awesome. awesome. Now, now, one thing, thing we have to talk about, about real quick, though, with this. One, one thing. Um, Cause of Doom does not get destroyed by the Belrog for, like, another 3,000 years. Okay? So, so Cause of Doom was around 3,000 years after Aragian was sacked and destroyed by Sauron. Okay? Because okay? they just closed the doors. doors. They're like, yeah, yeah see you, Sauron. They, they saved a few elves they could, and they're like, bye, clunk! Doors locked. Um, no way Sauron was getting in. Right? Um, which, which is pretty impressive, or at least he didn't care, care as much. much. But, but um, if they if they, they destroy Cause of Doom in this season, season that would be a big downer for me. That that would be so they've already really compacted a lot of stories, like crushed them down over hundreds and hundreds of years, and they put them all close to like within only a few years of each other, or a few months. Um, they really should not do that. I mean, I don't know why the Belrog's being showed more. Maybe, Maybe that he, he just takes over the lore part, part or something of Cause of Doom. But realistically, when they first find the Belrog, he, he takes it over her in only a few months. The Belrog kind of wipes out the dwarves and they have to leave Cause of Doom. So we'll see. That shouldn't happen. If it does happen, that is a huge lore inaccuracy. And I will say it's completely bad. Um, but if they don't do that, cool. I do like seeing the Belrog, though. It's always fun to see a Belrog. Um, then we get a shot of Galadriel shooting some arrows. Like a real elven archer. Yeah. That's totally, totally fine. fine. I, will I will not stop, stop until it, uh, this is put right. right. So, so, again, this, this whole idea that I feel like she feels like it's her fault now that Sauron has been brought into the world. world. It's, it's not, not the... Not the I didn't, Gladriel, Gladriel didn't do that. Do that. Okay, okay, guys? In the war. It, it was not her fault. fault but they're trying to make it a protagonist. I get it. I'm hoping they're going to make her a little bit more, like, honorable towards people, polite towards people. Uh, maybe, maybe a little more regal, regal I, think I think is the terminology. terminology. Um, I, think I think that was a big negative for me in season one with Gladriel. Um, um, and the actress, she seems very nice. She seems, she seems like she's a good actress. actress. I, don't I don't think, think it's her fault. I think it's the lines, lines and the way they wanted want her to say them. Okay. okay? Um, I, I, I don't think it should be, she should be so aggressive. Let's, Let's put it that way. Because we know from all the lore, all the canon, right, and what Peter Jackson did, not that Peter Jackson should be forced on to what Amazon wants to do. But what, what, what Tolkien did, they should respect what Tolkien wrote about a character and how she acted. All right. So we'll see. I think she'll be better in this one. I'd also love to see her do some magic. It, just a little bit of magic. If she doesn't do any magic in season two, I'm going to be disappointed. I, I won't lie. I'm going to be like, okay. So we're... She's like one of the most powerful sorceresses. Where is her magic? She should be the same level of power here that pretty, pretty much she is, is in the Lord, Lord of the Rings movies, where, where we know, know that she, in the Hobbit, Hobbit movies, that she goes up and blows that orc away. You guys, guys I, 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 I know I've, I've I hit, hit this home a few times in the previous reviews of season one, but you have to realize that the, the, the time period from when here Gladriel to Kate Blanche's in Lord of the Rings is like someone being 65 and then being like 70, okay? So like, it's like, it's, it's, it's not, not like, like she's a 25 year old here and then she's 70 in the Lord of the Rings movies in the time period. She's already been alive a long time at this point. She shouldn't be making, you know, like what a teenager would make mistakes, right? Um, not that I'm implying she did that with everything, but there are one or two things in season one that I felt like with her anger towards people and like so, no self-control, like towards the queen of Numenor and stuff, which is kind of out of place. That's just my own opinion. But I feel, feel like, like that's how I feel about it. All right. All right. Then, then there's a cool shot of the orc flipping around, around and the torch, torch falls, and, and she swings her arrows through the fire. fire. Okay, okay, so fantasy looking cool, 10 out of 10. 10. Looks freaking awesome, awesome, all right? Realistically, Realistically I like a little bit of realism in, in my fantasy. fantasy. I am going to pick on it just a little bit. bit. I know you're all like, ah, oh, don't do it, Zon. I'm going to pick on a little bit. For one, fire arrows are really, really hard to keep lit. 
really, really, really hard. Okay, you can't just light regular, regular tipped arrows, arrows on fire. fire. Those, Those would have had to have been specially oiled fire. fire. But, but even then, then it's hard, hard to keep them lit. lit. Okay, maybe, maybe the elves, elves have some special material to make them lit. Blah blah blah, blah fantasy. You could you could definitely do some stuff like that. But it just it's. It's, it's a little, little hard, hard with the realism there. But, but again, there's, there's some stuff that people go overboard with that, right? It's like, like we can't even watch, watch the series, series now because of it. it. It's like, ah, it's not that big of a deal, right? right? There's, there's like someone, someone one, of my, one, of one of our content creators showed me an article and this guy, people were getting mad. They're like, oh, look, people are going to be so annoyed because this one shot, she's like shooting up at the ground. Let's see, where is it? Also, by the way, really cool horse rear with blowing the horn. I don't know if that's that Elrond. I don't know. It just looks really cool. We get a shot of a sealed door. Every, Every soul is in the in seen or the unseen world, world. which is true. That's that's, that's more accurate, right? right? We, we know that Glorfindel and Maia are like Gandalf and Radagast and Saruman, Blue Wizards. wizards. They're, they're both, if they, they're, they're in like the unseen world dimension and the regular dimension. That's something Tolkien, Tolkien made up. That's totally canon. And then, um, and then uh, we see a sealed door here fighting some spiders. So maybe he has to travel through Ungoliath, not Ungoliath, she lives there. In, in Mordor? Mordor? That'd, That'd be kind of cool. cool. I'd, I'd be down to see that. that. Um, but, but let's see. see. I, I guess, guess it's not actually in this one that I thought. thought but um, there's, there's a shot of Galadriel. Galadriel. It's not. There's, there's a, a shot of Galadriel shooting this arrow from the ground, ground is what I was talking about. about. And, and they were saying in the article, oh my gosh, archery people are going to have a heyday with how terribly unrealistic this is. And it's like, I get it. Yes. yes, she, she is an elf. She could probably do it, right? Compared to someone, you know, thousands of years of practice. Um, um, you know, you know and, you know, technically the elves are a slightly a bit stronger than a human on average. Uh, uh, it's not huge in Lord of the Rings, but, but there's definitely, you know, a whole, like, human Vulcan thing going on. Star Trek, Star Trek right? Vulcans look, look like human size, but they're much stronger. Um, you know, with their, like, muscle mass or whatever. Uh, there's, there's definitely, definitely that happening to an extent with it, with it. But, but yeah, yeah, does it look a little un unrealistic? Yes. yes. And, I and I think articles like that are way overboard. See, I, See, I think that's, that's the camp of like, people can have their opinions. opinions. They could totally have that and pick it apart and say how unrealistic it is. And it, they're, they're right, right? They're, right? they're not, not wrong. wrong. But at the same time, it's like, guys, it looks cool. We're just watching the fantasy, right? It's the things that are like so unrealistic that pull me out of the moment. That's, 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 that's the, the ones that kind of hurt me. And, and of course, course, maybe a real, a, real, you, know, a you know, a professional archer, it pulled them out of the, the fantasy moment because they're like, ah, oh, that's, that's an impossibility, right? right? So, so I, get I get that. that. Totally understand. understand. Right. right. I'm, I'm trying to be really fair on how I'm saying this. this. But, but, um, but yeah, yeah, I just think that's a little, this whole thing, as much as it looks really cool, it kind of pulls you out of the moment. And again, the fire arrows thing, after I learned about the fire arrows are just so how unrealistic it is in fantasy and video games, it's like, they were, they were definitely, definitely a thing. thing. I've watched, watched one channel, channel I really like that reviews arrows or archery systems. systems. I forget his name right now. But he did a whole like fire arrow thing. They were really think they're very hard to make. And um, and, they and they never really set things on fire. It was, it was really hard to set things on fire. It was more like stab and then burn someone's flesh. <laughs> Dark. Um, so anyway, and then we get a shot of this. Okay. We're almost done. This is the end. Is this Saruman? That's, That's immediately what I would think, would think right? What a lot of other people thought. thought. Um, um, but he's in Rune, right? right? Um, it, it would be really, really, really cool, cool if they're pulling a fast one, everyone. everyone. And, and again, the, the stranger is is one, one of the blue wizards, wizards and, this and this is the other blue wizard, wizard and, and it's, it's not Gandalf and Saruman. It, it would be awesome. It would be so cool. And I'm going to hold out on that till the very end. And I know that Nerd of the Rings is in the same boat as me. He said that on his review. He's like, I'll hold out till the very end until it's proven to me that they're not the Blue Wizards. I'm going to say right now, me and Nerd of the Rings, uh, I gotta, I'm not going to speak for, for Matt or Nerd of the Rings, but I'm sure he's, since he's hoping for it too, I know me personally will be very, I will be very, very disappointed. <laughs> will I, will it be the end all? No, of course not. I mean, it'd be cool to see Saruman and Gandalf, but realistically, Saruman and Gandalf never went to Rune. They never went to that area. We know that from canon. It was the Blue Wizards that did that. So if they tricked everyone, they can everyone think it's Gandalf and everyone think it's Saruman. And they're like, ha ha, it's the Blue Wizards. That would be an awesome twist. It would be an awesome twist. Also because people who don't know about Gandalf and the Blue Wizards, I mean, or don't know about the Blue Wizards, would be like, what? Who are the Blue Wizards? Right? Like, it would get them into it, too. So that would be cool. I think it would be cool. But anyway, he looks awesome. He's also got a staff going on here. It does kind of look like a broom. Nerd of the Rings looks like a broom. 
true, but at the, at the top, top it doesn't, doesn't look like it. Look like it. Then, then we, we get, get some of the crazy, crazy scary, scary cultist, cultist ladies, ladies again. again. With all, all their snakes. snakes. Maybe, maybe they're from Rune. Maybe, maybe they're from whatever. whatever. Do, Do they, they work for that guy? guy? I'm assuming they work against him. Right? Maybe. Or maybe they were after the... Maybe, Maybe they, they were, were after, after this guy, guy the, whole the whole time, and they thought it was the other guy, guy right? right? They're like, that's not him. him. And, and maybe the, the, he, he, like, reunites, reunites with the other guy. And then they're like, the, the blue wizard that jogs, jogs his memory, memory right? right? I don't, I don't know. know. But anyway, who knows? And then we get a cool shot we saw in the other trailer of Alfarazon with the eagle. I'm sure the eagle's like, see you guys. You're turning evil. We're leaving the island. And then we get a shot of him dropping the rings into the fire. Uh, we'll, we'll know, know that, that it was uh, you who, who was the architect, architect of their design. Um, so I, I'm assuming he's trying to destroy the other rings of heart. I'm, I'm sure, assuming Sauron gets, gets right? right? Um, I, have I have a feeling feel like that they're like, like I, I wonder if Sauron's like going to go into the fire and get it. And like, oh my goodness. He's like, evil man. So we'll see what happens on that. I have no idea. That's just all guessing. Then we get a shot of Tom Bombadil. Again, Again, not, not looking, looking extremely, extremely happy, happy, but, but kind of look like he's trying to sing. sing. He's, he's like, like, ah! Uh, um, maybe he's, he's singing here, here and, and, like, the, the fire starts, starts going crazy because of it. Because like, of it. like, I mean, <laughs> is, that is that how he pumps, pumps up the fire? fire? Who, who, who needs a billow when, when you can do that? Oh, the fire just goes crazy. But I'm really hoping I still get to see a happy-looking, smiley, Tom Bombadil, Bombadil face, so, so I am going to be critiquing, critiquing him tremendously in the series. If he is not singing most of the time, or at least smiling and being really happy when he talks, I will be very disappointed. So, um, and I will let you all know. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, this is obviously the stranger here. And then we get a shot of Elrond, we get a shot of some of the fighting going on. Kill, kill them all, all. and then there's that, that made-up made character, character who actually is, he's not, he's pretty cool, actually, I mean, all things considered, he's like the half-orc, half-elf, and he's basically trying to, like, I feel like this is inspiration from the Shadows of Mordor games, because he's like a commander trying to take over the orcs under Sauron, like, I'm in charge now, I don't know, it just feels like that kind of, right, because there's like a, in the Shadows of Mordor, they show all the splitting of the orcs, right, then we see an orc jump, then we see... Elrond, Elrond fighting a big, big fiery, fiery explosion, explosion on August 29th. All right, so anyway, this, this will be out, and then, and then we get a shot of Sauron holding something, and that guy, and power changes, power changes everything, and then at this moment, Durin gives some speech. I'm assuming he's giving a speech to either fight the Belrog, which I hope they're not going to destroy because of Doom in this season, because that would be really bad timing, but we'll see. Um, I'm, I'm a feeling like he's going to probably go out and save, help, help the elves, elves Naragian, or at least help Elrond escape, right? right? And then Elrond's going to come either to Khazad Doom or go and find Rivendell, which is not very far from Khazad Doom, right? It's probably a day or two riding on a horse. And then um, you get a scary looking freaking orc right here, yes. And then these are those two made up characters, and I don't know what's going on. He's trying to drown him, he's trying to save him. I have no, no idea what's going on here. This is the whole thing with, like, the, the faithful versus the other ones. They're, like, fighting each other. Great Tales of Our Age is being written. I, I, I don't know. Then you get a shot of Nori. This looks like the stranger on the ground. Again, I was kind of hoping that we just have one Hobbit in the show. We'll see. I think there's going to be more. But, um... I mean, her character's been fine. I hope that she gets a little bit more, like, adventurous Hobbit going on. Then we get a shot of the horses doing a charge. Looks pretty cool. The horses look awesome. Um, I, don't I don't know what, what even they're charging at. I guess they're coming to a Reagan, right? right? The Misty Mountains. It's, it's the, the people from the Elrond's, Elrond's army from Linden. Linden. Well, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, then, then you get a shot of the kid, kid right? The, the one kid. kid. Um, he's he's going to be having, having some other mission, mission probably with the other, other that, that other elf and stuff. And there's another new girl they get. We get a shot at an Ent swinging it, and I guess we're going to have an Ent in the show. I think it's going to be would make sense. They were near Rune, so this would not be. Totally, totally far-fetched that you met the ant wives, wives, which is what I think we saw in the first trailer, trailer right? right? Um, we, we also, also get, get some fireballs fireball shooting, which looks really, really cool. cool. We, we get this guy, <laughs> this big guy, <laughs> does look. I'm, I'm just laughing because Nerd of the Rings has been calling him Bob. He looks like a Bob. Sorry to all the Bobs out there. You don't look like trolls, but like all the named trolls in the Hobbit books, this guy looks like a Bob. Um, he is big too. I think he looks freaking awesome, mind you. And then, and then, of course, this guy's going to do classic Legolas, Legolas things, things because we have to have one off doing that. that. Um, um, and, then and then you think, think it's only you who put yourself in my power. power. And, then and then you, you get a really scary, scary you know, 
shot, shot there, there you, you get a shot, shot of this is Sauron's crown again underwhelming but, but if orcs made it for him maybe, maybe not as much but I don't, I don't know why like, like the dwarf crown, crown and this crown, crown have very similar color aesthetic and material you, you know what I'm saying? saying? I feel like, like this is okay because it's the evil crown, crown but, but I still, still feel like the dwarf one should have been more like gold and silver and mithril with gems in it, right? Um, um, of course, I guess mithril was just found in the season, so they, they wouldn't have mithril crowns yet. yet. Um, and, and then, then he gets... That's actually a really cool way they did how they, like, hooked the swords in. If you notice, her sword is caught between these two pieces of metal and his, and he can't quite hit her and she can't quite hit him. I, I was actually kind of cool. Like, like that, that's, that's kind of cool. cool. I'm, I'm not going to lie. And this is Galadriel. And, and then, I don't know what... I, I don't know why... Why, why is she making this face? face? It's like... Um, is she, like, like worried he's getting, getting in her mind or something? I'm not 100% sure on that face. face. She's, She's obviously angry, but it's really hard to tell what's going on here. I guess we'll have to see it. Maybe this is near the end of the season. I don't I don't really know what's going on there. And then that was the end of it. But we'll find out. So anyway, with that, my friends... That's, That's my review, review of the trailer. trailer. I, know I know it was a little long, long but um, thanks, thanks for watching. For um, thank you to my wonderful patrons for their support. Thank, thank you guys for uh, supporting the channel. channel. And uh, again, again, hopefully this was a fair and nice breakdown of the series. I hope it really helped you guys out with your thoughts on it. And again, you you are all welcome to any opinion you have, and here on this channel, I welcome everyone, whether you really love Rings of Power, whether you really hate it, you're not going to watch it, or whether you're somewhere in the middle and you want to just enjoy it and you don't really care either way, you're all welcome. Everybody's welcome. And um, and I feel like we should just, you know, again, I have many different content I do on this channel, so you're welcome to watch my Rings of Power stuff, or you're welcome to completely ignore it and just watch out my Lotro to turn to Morian lore videos. Because again, I want to be a voice for Lord of the Rings content, and I also want to be a voice for Tolkien and breaking things down and pointing out to people who watch it, if they're in the middle, to they know what is made up by Amazon and what is canon to the original lore. Because it's also going to get really confusing if people are getting the good canon legends from Lord of the Rings Online, and they're like, what's the difference? Because i got to give a shout out to Lord of the Rings Online. They do one battle of the end battle, which is basically season two here, but, but from, from a canon, canon perspective, perspective. And, and Celebrimbor, at the very last, stands at the forge building and literally fights Sauron and a bunch of orcs. He loses, he gets tackled to the ground, but he does it, and he fights Sauron. So, we'll, hopefully that'll happen in this series, but uh, if anything, we know Lord of the Rings Online did it right and followed the story there. But, but hopefully, hopefully the Lord of the Rings Amazon, Amazon series, series here for Rings of Power will be really fun and entertaining still. Those, those are my hopes. hopes. Yes, yes, I have worries. Yes, yes I have some hopes. And I'm a little bit more excited about season two than I was for season one. Um, I think there's a lot uh, more room to be enjoyable, which is combat stuff. Um, and it looks like the way they're doing the combat is following the actual lore. The way they do the rings, it's already been pretty butchered in what order they're made. So we'll see how they do it in season two here. All right, with that, my friends, have a great, wonderful day in Middle Earth. Stay happy. I'm your host and guides on Orange Field here on Voice the Rings, and I'm at your service and your families. Have a great one, my friends. See you in the next ones.